If you like our content, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking that subscribe button. We'd really appreciate it. And for more strategic tips on international tax and wealth planning, subscribe to our email list and follow us on LinkedIn. Links are below. Welcome to our latest video, Who Can Benefit From My Trust? It's a question clients always have. They want to know if it's just family members, if they can include friends or charities or other people. That's exactly what we're going to be talking about in this video. If you're familiar with trust and foundation lingo, lingo great. If not, you might want to check out our introduction to trust and introduction to foundations video. I'll put the link down below. This will give you an overview of beneficiaries and protectors and trustees and stuff like that that'll help you understand this video better. Now, before we get into the material, as always, I'd like to give a disclaimer. This presentation is prepared for education purposes only. This presentation is not legal, tax, or any other type of advice. Each individual's circumstances are different. You should seek legal and or tax advice to address any specific questions you may have. So, so who can benefit? Well, pretty much anybody. You can have friends be beneficiaries, family members, charities, you can even have pets be beneficiaries in many countries. And you can also have contingent beneficiaries, right? So you could say, well, you know, I want everything to go to my dog, but when he dies, I want it to go to my kids. Or you can say, I want everything to go to my kids, but if they predecease me, then I want it to go to charity or, you know, my cousin or nephew. So there's, I mean, there's really an, an, an unlimited, uh, combination of people that can benefit and contingencies and stuff like that. Uh, I mean, really sky's the limit within the confines of the law in the jurisdiction in which your trust is established. Some countries do have some restrictions on who can be a beneficiary. I mean, Malta is a good example of this. If you set up a family trust in Malta, beneficiaries who are bloodline descendants, so you direct line beneficiaries, can benefit up to an unlimited degree, but collateral line family members can only benefit up to the fifth degree. So you do really need to be mindful of what jurisdiction you're setting your trust up in and what restrictions on beneficiaries might be. And if, you know, if the jurisdiction you're looking at doesn't fit what you want to accomplish, I'm sure there's another jurisdiction out there that will. There's a lot of jurisdictions that offer a lot of, of flexibility in drafting beneficiary provisions. So oftentimes it's more challenging to figure out how people are going to benefit from your trust than it is to figure out who's going to benefit from your trust. And there's wide latitude in drafting distribution provisions and there's many different types of distribution provisions. So one type of distribution provision, for example, is a fixed distribution provision. And with a fixed distribution provision, it's the trust agreement that dictates who's going to receive what, when, and how much. So an example of this would be a trust agreement that states that the trustee must distribute the trust's income equally amongst the beneficiaries each year. In this case, the trustee has no discretion of who to distribute to, how much, or when, right? He has to distribute the income each year equally amongst the trust beneficiaries because it's laid out like that in the trust agreement. So that's a fixed distribution. Then you have discretionary distribution provisions. And an example of a discretionary distribution provision is one where the trustee has sole discretion to whom to distribute when and how much, right? So if you had a trust with, let's say, 10 beneficiaries, the trustee could decide to not make any distributions for several years and then one year distribute all of the trust's income for the past several years to one beneficiary. That's what discretionary distribution provisions allow, depending on how they're drafted, because there's also combinations, right? So that are partially fixed and partially a, a, a discretionary distribution provision. So for example, you could say, well, all income has to be distributed by the trustee each year, but the trustee has discretion to which beneficiaries to distribute and how much. It doesn't have to be equal beneficiaries. Or you could say, for example, income must be distributed equally, but the trustee has the discretion to decide when those distributions are made. So he may make distributions in some years, he may 
not make distributions in other years. You can also have contingent distributions, right? So, for example, if a beneficiary achieves something that the trustees require to make a distribution. So an example of this would be, okay, each child who gets a bachelor's degree gets $100,000 out of the trust. So these are just some examples of how people can benefit from your trust. Now, another question is whether or not beneficiaries have the right to use trust properties. So in a lot of cases, trusts own properties, right? They own family homes, they own vacation homes, in some cases they own yachts and different things of that nature. And do the beneficiaries have the right to use that property or does the trustee have the power to allow them to use the property, right? So for example, some trusts don't allow this. Some trusts say, okay, beneficiaries have the right to use a vacation home um, or the right to use a yacht. Other trusts may say that the trustee has the discretion to allow beneficiaries to use trust assets, but they don't have to let them, right? And you can also put contingencies in there as to when they're allowed to use those assets, right? So you can say, okay, well, you know, the family vacation home can only be used by beneficiaries who are married or beneficiaries that are college graduates. And then, like I said, you also need to specify who makes the decision as to whether or not the beneficiary can use the trust property, right? Is this something within the trustee's discretion and the beneficiary needs the trustee's permission or is this something that the beneficiary has a right to use and the trustee doesn't really have anything to say about it? The point I'm trying to make is there is wide latitude in structuring not only who is going to benefit from your trust, but how they're going to benefit. And a lot of care should be taken to draft these provisions properly, especially when you're designing a multi-generational structure. You know, we need to think several generations down the road how this might play out. So this is this is really the the, the meat of structuring trusts a lot of times. Hope you found this information useful. We hope that you like our content and that you watch future videos. Thank you.